So I'm going to show a quick example of this using this basic model. So this is a case for a pump. It only has three parts in it. They're all kind of blocky and simple. And I only have two moves. One move is moving my blue part down to my pink part. The other move is moving my green part down to my pink part. So the blue part is located by this face here. The green part is also located by this face here. If I now want to build it and I deviate it, we can see them both move up and down with that same pink face. We can see their surfaces also move up and down. Now, in this model, I also have three measures. I'm measuring the height of the blue cover, so from the bottom of that pink surface or that pink uh, support up to the top. I need to see that vector point up. <laughs> oh, no. Um, okay, the direction is correct. Yes, so. the direction is correct. <laughs> And then I'm measuring from the bottom of the pink cover up to the top of the green cover. And then lastly, I'm measuring the flushness between the blue cover and the green cover. So if I nominal build here, I can click this GeoFactor analysis button. And the GeoFactor analyzer will pop up. Um, I'm going to have my gradient step set to 0 0.1. I'm going to go ahead and start my analysis. It takes very little time. Now, when you open up the GeoFactory Analyzer window, I'm going to go ahead and extend out my columns so you can see everything. This is for that first blue cover height measure, and I'm seeing that I only have two contributors, one with a range of two, one with a range of one. Each of them has a G-factor of one. This is predictable because this is a 1D example. This is only happening in one dimension. We're just measuring from the bottom of this pink part to the top of this blue cover. So now, I don't have my worst case showing right now. So to make your worst case showing, if that's the case, you can go to Options, Display Options, and then in here you can choose which fields you want to display in your GeoFactor window. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my worst case range so that I can see that as well and click Apply. And predictably, with a range of 2 and a range of 1, at a 1 to 1 ratio in the 1D, our worst case is 3 millimeters. And our 6 sigma range is predictably lower than that. So if I move on to my second measure, I now have three contributors. And once again, predictably, this is a 1D stack. This is from the bottom of the pink part to the top of the green cover, so we're measuring that height now. My worst case is 2 plus 1 plus 1. Four. And when I RSS those together using a statistical method, I end up with a range of 2.45. So much lower than our worst case range, even with only three tolerances in our model. And then our last one, measuring the flushness between our blue part and our green part. We now have the profile on the bottom of the green, the profile on the top of the green, and the profile on the top of the blue. And those are 2, 2, and 1. So worst case, those combine to 5. And when we RSS those together, we end up with the square root of 9, which is 3. So that's a pretty simple way to get your worst case, especially in a one-dimensional situation like this. And, and that 3 is, is including 99.73% yes. of your possible variation. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can do it in GeoFactor, but in the regular analyst, you can say, well, show me the plus or minus four sigma range. And you yeah. can compare that to worst case, which hopefully would still be less than five, but still cover 99.99. <clears throat> and that uh, estimated worst case, you're showing five. Yep. Right? What is the... Uh, what is the minimum and maximum values then? So for this one, the nominal value is at zero millimeters. And so my plus or minus would be 2.5. So it'd be this blue cover could be 2.5 millimeters above this green cover, or it could be 2.5 millimeters below this green cover. It's a flushness measure. Um, for the other ones, 
This one is, I know that they're 22 millimeters. Inside your measures, it'll give you your nominal. your nominal value right here. So if you just look at the measure, you take that nominal value, then look at your geofactor worst case, you can divide that by two, add it, subtract it. Right, a lot of customers always wanna know what's the nominal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 